Well, tonight, PMTV have ventured over to the dark side. Actually, that's the affectionate name for East Paria because, of course, it always used to be a bit of a blackout. Tonight, we're on Soy Kaunoi, or Boon Sampan. We're on Soy 9, which is just off of there. And we're at a bar called the Duke's Lounge. Now, this bar was previously known as the Golden Gate, but it's been taken over by a new owner and it's been rebranded as the Duke's Lounge. Tonight, we're here to meet a guy who is an MBE, but he is more famous for being a world-class snooker player, Mr. Jimmy White. So he's here to raise money for charity, and the money's going to go to the Father Ray Foundation. Actually, Jimmy's done a few different bars in town. I think he did Misty's, the Brass House out by Lake Maprachan, and he did Kilkenny at LK Metro. So people pay money, get to play Jimmy, and let's see who wins. But, of course, the real winner is going to be Father Ray. So let's go in and check it out. Okay, now first up to play Jimmy was the owner of the Duke's Lounge, it's Jamie. Jamie, how did it go? It went very well, thank you very yeah, much. You, yeah. got, you got your ass kicked. Basically, I got whipped, yeah, as I normally expect. Here he is himself. Anyway. Right, all right. But anyway, you, good good effort. So you paid a thousand baht to yeah, play him. A thousand baht. A thousand baht really want to play Jimmy. All, all right. going to the Ray Charity. Yeah. Well, it's sweet, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we'll be talking to Derek from uh, Father Ray later because all the money raised from this sort of tour that Jimmy's doing around the bars goes to the educational fund but Derek will tell us about it. so tell us about the Duke's Lounge what's going on here and more importantly about because you, you do like events as I'm well we're right? a promotional company yeah this is just part of the promotional company Duke's Promotion okay. so we do uh, weddings conferences etc oh, big right. parties big shows phone parties whatever so oh, right. that's what we're up in Patio all in Patio Bangkok and we're getting bigger okay okay all right, and I mean, I, you, when I came to meet you about doing tonight's gig, you said to me, you know, you regard this as your office. But tell us about Duke's Lounge. What, what would you say makes it different from the other bars around town? Well, definitely on the dark side, this is definitely a different bar. <laughs> Let's face it, yeah? It's more of a clubby bar, daytime, nice bar. At All night, we get a bit of party mode, so. All right. Well, Jimmy, well done getting this organised, because, I mean, Jimmy's a, a big name, and Derek was telling me that when he went to the Father E Foundation last year, you know, he was thinking the kids wouldn't know who he is. And then it was like yeah, Justin right Bieber walked in. <laughs> yeah, so, well done to you, mate. A bit of kudos. It's actually a, a very nice for your first event yeah. under your events company. Or right. is it under your events company? Well, you know. What does it matter? It's under it. Sorry. It's all for a laugh and it's all for it's a good for cause. Right? as well, yeah. All right, stay tuned. Right, thank you very much. Uh, racking up. Well, the next game's nearly over. Let's go and see who's uh, who's getting beat here tonight at the Duke's Lane. Stay tuned. <laughs> Now, you know, when you do these jobs, you've got to make sure you have all your questions in your head. My first question was going to be, who is the sort of biggest adversary when you do gigs like this? Is it the guys or the bar girls? He's just been bitten by the mama sound here at the Duke's Lounge. Played, Unbelievable, Jimmy. She played very well. She put in some balls. She uh, looks like she's been practicing a lot. <laughs> she's not bad, is she? She's not bad at all, no. Well, listen, mate, it's, it's great, great work that you're doing tonight. I mean, you're coming around to some of these bars there. They're not just, you know, the sort of uh, high-profile bars in no. town. But you're, you're a bit of a pattier boy, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm having a place built in Wongamat Beach, so... In well, we, know, of, we know Winston at the time, yeah. Yeah, in three or four years' time, I should be living here. But um, last night, we played in the Brass House, yeah. and they raised 179000 yeah. for Father Ray Foundation in a small bar. Yeah. So as long as people are willing to uh, put money in yeah. for the charity, I'll come along and play. And we've got one now in the Duke's Lounge and hopefully make some money tonight. And uh, we've got a tournament 
just been announced a few days ago to be in the Amari Hotel next year. We've got four European players playing four Thai players, uh, a million baht. Uh, prize money and a million baht goes to the Father Ray Foundation. Well, actually, I was looking at the website before I came out tonight and that, that looks fabulous. I know the guys who are organising it yeah. and uh, I know that you were at the press conference on Sunday at the yeah. Amari. So that's great but it's you know, it's all good stuff and I mean you seem to have an affinity with Paddy here because I mean alright you've bought a place but you've been coming here for years anyway. I, I remember, I remember um, coming here as a boy of 18. I went from um, I went from Japan to Bangkok and then we went from Bangkok to Pattaya and we had a week here and I've loved the place ever since. <laughs> well, that's the way it happens for everybody. Yeah. Not, not normally when they're playing snooker around no. the world. Or no, but you've got some oh. nice snooker clubs here. Yeah. So, you know, um, you know, I can always practice here. All right. Okay, so between now and next year, or give us a couple of things that's lined up for you. Well, tomorrow I go to Manila. Yeah. I've got a um, demonstration in Manila tomorrow. And then from there I fly back to London. Uh, then I've got a few qualifying matches next week and then I'm off to China and then Hong Kong and hopefully that's that is in the end of October and hopefully I'll slip a few days in Patio with my travels. Brilliant. God bless you. Okay well Jimmy great work tonight and uh, I can see everybody's dead keen to play a game with you yes. and I can't believe that Tip beat you. you know? She beat me fair yeah. and square. Yeah. <laughs> All right thanks very much Listen, mate. All right you. stay God tuned. Okay thank you. Cheers. Now, as you've been saying, the money raised from tonight and the other bars that uh, Jimmy's been chewing around the last few days goes straight to the Father Ray Foundation. Joining me now is a guy who's been working there, volunteering for, oh my God, I can't, don't know how many years. It's Derek Franklin. Derek, how many years? 13 years. 13, 13 years. years, man and boy, right? Yeah. All right, so this, this event that, that Jimmy's been doing, correct me if I'm wrong, it's going straight towards the educational part of Father Ray. What exactly is that? It's all the money is going to pay for further education for our children. So specifically at the children's home, which is just not far from here. We've got um, 140 kids. Uh, and a few years ago, we had our first ever graduates from university. Okay. Today, we've got 11 in university. 11. So you, what you mean is you've taken them from being orphans, I presume, from a very young age, right through, through the whole school system, and then through university. That, that's right. We take them from... Well, some of them are going to kindergarten and they go all the way through. Yeah. Um, but the, the first, one of the first boys to graduate was basically, we found him taking food out of a bin on the streets. And he was one of the first to graduate from university and he's now a teacher. Wow. So education, well, nice education just changes everything. So we've got 11 at university now. They're trained to be nurses, lawyers, business managers. But the thing is, we've got 24, 15 year olds. And most of them want to go on to further education. But the good thing is, for all the ones, all the ones who are in university now, they are the first ever in their family to, to graduate from school and go on to further education. So we're we're very proud of them all. But we want to be able to say to the kids who come through in the future, you can go to school as well. You can go to university. Tell me, I mean, it's hard hard to guess, I guess, but roughly how much you think will be raised towards this over the well, last we, few days? We've had some. Uh, about 250,000 and that'll go to, all, all towards the uh, snooker tournament which is taking place in, in August next year yeah. and all the, all the money from there will go to education, be spent on nothing else, can't be spent on anything, just the education so, we can, so that we can look, look to the future and promise our kids that we can let them have what the kids are having now. Okay. Well you talk about the kids you know, uh, aspiring to be what they want, want to be. We've got a young girl tonight, she didn't want to do an interview, but she played Jimmy, yeah. and he said to me, he said, make sure we get a shot of her, because he thinks that she's going to be the next woman world champion, female world champion. I, I've, seen, I've seen her play. Yeah. 
We had, we had um, at Legends Bar recently a, a pool tournament and she played and I thought she'll knock a few balls but I, I couldn't believe how so good she was. But then again, some of our kids play and, and they, I don't even play anymore, they beat me. I, I, don't, I don't bother anymore. Hey, but it's incredible, I mean she's taking on a world class snooker player and just takes it in a stride. You know, maybe that's the, uh, what, the naivety of youth or whatever. So they don't get that nerves, you know, they just, you know, hey, I'm good, I <laughs> just go and do it. I think, I think at that age, you're not worried about anything. You, you just play it, you know, you, she, she, she's very, very, I've seen her play a few times, very confident, and I, I think she will go far. Yeah, I'm sure she will. Some of the ladies I've watched play here in the bar tonight play. They, they put, um, give Jimmy a run for his money. They did actually, yeah. I'm not sure about the guys though. He does, maybe, maybe it's favouritism on Jimmy's part. Maybe it's a woman's sport. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right, Derek, great work. And um, we look forward to, I mean, Jimmy talks about the, the event next year. So we look forward to coming along to that. But it's all great. And, you know, snooker, you know, I remember coming to Thailand when I was 15, 17. And when they say, you know, you're from Scotland, they go, oh yeah, Stephen Henry. And, whatever. and they just, this snooker seems to be a sport that ties really identify with. Jimmy came to our children's home last year and I didn't think the kids would know who he was. But when he arrived, they just went mad. It was, it was like Justin Bieber, Bieber had arrived, seriously. And he, he's just a gentleman. He arrived, he arrived with Ken Doherty and they've spent several hours playing with the kids, signing autographs. And when I told um, Ken came this year, that on Sunday we took 20 kids down to the Amari and Jimmy got out of the car and it was like, oh, Jimmy's here, Jimmy's here, Jimmy's here. They were so excited. I didn't think they'd know who he was, but they all knew who Jimmy White is. Well, I'll have to say he's a remarkably humble guy and, uh, and he also has an affinity with Padia in Thailand and he seems to love the place, which is obviously why he's giving up his time to help organisations yeah. like yourself. It's, it's a great um, opportunity for someone like this to visit our kids. It's great for our kids, but it's also making our work more aware so that people um, know more about us you know we, we've got 850 kids and students with disabilities um, special needs you know about the school for the blind as well so all this publicity is a, a great help to us and he's just a, he's just a good man yeah he is a good man you're a good man yeah, too thank you very much all right we're going to have one more interview and that's with jimmy who's the owner of the brass house that i mentioned earlier out at lake mapachan stay tuned thanks very much thanks very much Okay, now this guy, actually I've been wanting to interview him for a few years, but never had the opportunity, but now's the time. It's Jimmy Deacon from the Brass House. Well, it's actually his wife's business. For him, it's just somewhere to have a drink. Jimmy, well done last night. You raised how much money? Uh, 170,000 baht. That's incredible. Well, for a small bar around the lake, I thought we done really well. Uh, everyone supported us. First time Jimmy had played around there. And, uh, On a Monday night? Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. Yeah, it went really well. It went really well, yeah. Awesome, so how was the money raised? I mean, tonight uh, people are paying a thousand baht yeah, to play them. Yeah, a thousand baht a game. Uh, we had some raffles. Yeah. Uh, and had two auctions at the end of the night. Uh, large bottles of whiskey. Four snooker queues. And a queue that Jimmy had brought out from England. Which we actually got 102,000 baht for that queue. What a snooker queue. Yeah, yeah. But did it? Did, was the bidding? Did it go all the way up yeah, to 102? I, I, I was helping the bidding go up a bit. And, uh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, one person bought it for 51,000, yeah. and then another person very kindly doubled it, but he didn't want the queue. He let the person it bought. So he basically gave 102,000 baht. 102,000 baht for a queue, yeah. But okay. altogether, it's 170,000. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And the money's all going to go to Father Ray. How do you feel about that? Fan absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's a good charity. I've uh, been going a long time. Uh, hopefully, it's going to send a few people to university, I've just finished school. Maybe about 10, 11 people that we send to university. All right. So it's all going to a good cause. All right. Is this something you, you hope that the Brass House is going to get involved in again? Well, it's the first time we've done it. We normally do it for a local school around Mapachan. Uh, obviously, Jimmy was in town. I've known him 20 years, a good friend of mine. So. He kindly donated his time for us, and uh, 
everything went well. Well, it's the first time I've interviewed him, and it, you know, it's it's interesting when you meet guys like that because he's high profile, he's world class, yeah, yeah. but he's just a geezer, you know, yeah, with, a, with a heart of gold. He's down to earth. A lot of my customers are all so mid fifties and upwards, apart from myself, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Just, just uh, on. And obviously, they all grew up with him, kind of thing. So, a very good turnout. We had maybe eighty people there. Uh, and everyone put their hands in the pockets. So. That's what it's all about. Yeah. All right, we're going to wind up here. As we've been talking, the website for the promotion company, because the Duke's Lounge isn't just this bar, it's a promotions company, and they're going to be doing events that are going to attract thousands of people over the next year here in Padilla and beyond, and, of course, in the years to come. This is Paul and Jimmy at the Duke's Lounge saying bye-bye. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye-bye. Yeah.